Welcome. This is a tutorial on how to set up your send your dashboard and how you can send out email campaign. And also, I will be telling you some of the best practices that you may need to follow while sending an email campaign. So, the very first thing that you have to do is create an account at handsense.com. Go to handsense.com and click on start for free. And select your desired plan and enter the required details. Select the username, password, and just create the account. Once you have created it, go to app.sendit.com and use the same credentials that you have applied for Anderson software. So, my credentials are already present here, so I'm going to log in. So, this is where you will find in your marketing dashboard. So, here is your Sendit dashboard. And as you can see, there are a lot of verticals present here. So, the very first step in creating an email campaign is creating a sender. So, go to marketing and click on senders. And here, you have to create a new sender profile. So, I'm going to create a new sender. So, from name, you can add the name whichever you require. So, I'm going to add the sender. And from email address, send it. And if you want people to reply back to your email address, or something mention the same email address, or else you can simply mention as not a plan. Now enter all the company details here. So, first, company and company details. Enter the city, enter the city. States here has been a default of United States, so you can skip it out. Enter the zip code and the country you live in. And enter the nickname here. So once you have entered all the details, you can save it. And here, you send the app for financial creator, but still, it can very fine. So go to your mailbox and check for the support email. And it says let's verify your sender ID so you can start sending. So click on verify your sender ID. And voila, it's been verified. So go back to your dashboard and refresh it. So you can see here on the assessment that we So the first step is clear now. Now moving forward, forward to the second step, go to the contact section here. Now here is the place where you add all your contact list. So adding your contact list there are two ways. So either you can manually add one by one or you can upload a CSV file. So I already have a file of some test email addresses here which I have saved in a CSV format. So I'm going to upload it. So click on upload CSV and click on select the file to upload. So go to the file and here's my contact list and I'm going to upload it. So next, if you have a custom field in your email address, like the first name and last name, so it will automatically detect it. So when you click on it, so you can see here the first name, last name, and email ID. So all these are your PSD columns and next click on add contacts. So here the contact has been uploaded. It may take some time depending upon the number of contacts you have. So to check it out, just refresh your contact in here. And it may take some time. So yeah. It's been uploaded. So once you have added up the contacts, the next step is to create an unsubscribe group. So unsubscribe group is that if you want your people to stop uh, emailing and being delivered to their addresses, they can subscribe it up. So I have already created a group unsubscribe here. So it's essentially it's one click take unsubscribe. The so same likewise you can create a new group here. You can add the desired name for your group. So I'm going to add here some to unsubscribe and the group description you can add as a sound added the group description which is mentioned here 
and that the transcribing has been created. So, once transcribing group is created, the very next important thing is to create a sender authentication. So, go to settings, click on sender authentication. So, this is where this is a very mandatory step that you have to carry out in the campaign. So, here you have to do two things. The first is the main authentication and the branding. So, domain authentication is quite simple, but we suggest you if anybody has the technology on it and they can try it out very easily. So, as I don't have a company right now, I won't be able to add it, but I'm going to tell you how you can, can add it. So select the DNS course here. So, there are multiple DNS codes. It's a code area, I'm going to click on code area and will you also like to bank the links? Yes, I have worked and click on next and enter your domain that you sent from. So let's say send it.com and click on next. So as you can see here, so these are some of the records that you had to have. So what you have to do is go to code area and enter in, enter all these records into your DNS section. So once you have entered it, click on here as I have added these records and click on verify. So once you click on it, all the domains will be verified here and even the link branches. So once you have carried out these steps, you can go back to the marketing, click on campaigns. So this is where you can create your email campaign. So let's create a new campaign here. So I'm going to click to create a campaign. And I have an option to choose either I can prepare a custom template or I can go with a simple template. So as of now, I'm going to take a predefined template. I'm going to choose design editor. So if you are a HTML editor, you can also choose the code editor option here. But I'm going to go ahead with the design editor. Okay, so this is the place where you are going to build your campaigns. So as you can see, there's a print option here. And these are some of the modules that you can add to your campaigns. So whenever you're preparing a new campaign, you have an option to add buttons, columns, image, text, and your social media handles. You can add some space and the unsubscribe link here. So these are very kind of simple. You can just click on it, drag, and drop it wherever you like. So this is where how you can create a campaign. So you can modify it, you can configure the way you want. So once you have built up your email campaign, go to settings. And tell your campaign name. So I'm going to do that. go ahead and give some names here. So I'm going to do it from the holidays. I'm going to select the sender. I'm going to add some email subject. I'm going to add some email three header. So once I added the name, you go to recipients, you go on from your artisan, I'm going to select all contacts, you create your unsubscribe link here. Also, if you want to test out how your email campaigns look, you can add your best email address and send it out. And you can see how your email campaign looks. Also, we have a preview option here, as you can see. Just click on preview and it will show you how it can look in the desktop view. Also, how it can look in this phone view. So once you see the email campaign is pretty good, you can go ahead and you can send the campaign. Also, if you want to schedule it out for a later period, you can click here on schedule it and you can add the desired date and time that you want to send the campaign. So right now, we're going to directly send up the campaign. So all the details are present. So I'm going to send the campaign now. And it's validating. Almost there, yes, and I'm going to send the campaign. So, congrats, you have sent the campaign. And I have already received it here. So, as you can see, this is the email campaign that we have sent. And if you click on here, you can see all the details that are given. So, moving to the unsubscribe, if I click on it, so this is a one click unsubscribe link, and here it is. You no longer receive an email from us. So going back to the tab, campaign tab, there are multiple verticals here. So once you have sent up the campaign, you can go to the statistics tab here and click on your verticals. 
Okay, and so click on it, you can see the results of what are the click rates, what are the open rates, and how many you have opened there. So you will get all the aspect statistics here. So you have a filter option here, you can select the bounds, or you can any span report or any block that have happened. So all the statistics are what we will get into them here. So this is what with respect to the email campaign. Coming to the best practices, while you send an email campaign, there are some best practices that you may need to follow. So I have written down here the best practices. So here are some eight best practices of email marketing. So the very first is authenticate your email domain. So as I told that central authentication is a very mandatory part. So the right point for email domain authentication is. So authenticating your email with SPF and PKN2 to be the you know, ISP is that we are really worthy of sending an email. So it ensures that we are not a spammer and your email may land in a proper inbox. Second, maintain proper IP allocation. As your email program continues to grow, it's important to keep in mind that you need to have a proper email infrastructure once you move this team. So once you have reached a limit of 10,000 or more, uh, like depending on daily email, we will suggest you to go with a dedicated IP address. So once you have a dedicated IP address, you have to properly warm it up before sending out the email campaign. And third, perfect the opt-in process. So here, the email plate, email address has played a larger role in telling your details. An optimized opt-in process ensures that the email list is fully of engaged users. If you are sending email to the people who are aware of or will receive any messages from you, then mark your email as spam. To avoid that, you must ensure that you have a perfect opt-in process. And next is write non-spammy email subject lines. So the subject lines are crucial pieces of content that can ultimately determine if a user opens your email. Although ISPs continue to become more sophisticated in that way. So some of the phrases include like eliminate your debt, risk free, or free, or let's say uh yeah, you a reward bonus, something like that. So these words may affect your you know the, your whole email content and may make your email stand under the spam. And next is provide a preference center. Once your recruitment have a need to receive email from you, provide a preference center to them. Let them decide that how frequently that they want to receive email from your brand. Doing so helps put your recipient in a control and helps you keep them happy. So next is keep a clean list. So cleaning your contact list is regularly. If you are purchasing a list from a third party team, so there, are, there are chances that more than 50% of the email addresses are non valid. So the more and more the email we send to a non existing or invalid email addresses mm -hmm. may make the email stand and into the spam. So the more the block rate increases, the email reputation goes down. So make sure that you always keep your contact list. So avoid spam trap. Next is avoid spam trap. Spam traps are email addresses that are put in place by ISPs and email community organizations. To catch the spammers in the eye. So it's extremely challenging to get yourself off the blacklist. So it's best to never end up on the first page. So make sure the email content not just focus on the marketing, but it also have good content. Send email that people know. And this is a very crucial thing here. So you have to be the two parties here when trying to improve your email delivery. The one is the ISPs like Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, and your recipients. So once you are sending out a really good content, once people start loving it, so, so does the ISP. So the more and more you put stress on your content and make it really good, the emails will be the email campaigns will run successfully. So this is what with all respect to the email campaigns and the best practices. So I hope you carry out uh, all the practices very well. Thank you and all the best.